Hey, y'all, it's your girl, Claudia Jordan, and we're back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to sip this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? Hey, what's going on, Claudia? It's out here chilling. You doing good today? You tired? You happy? Hey, man, man. Look, you're in New York, right? I am. I'm in New York. I'm what's the weather crazy. like? It was nice today. It was like upper 70s. It was really nice. I was out here with uh, L'Oreal for her show, Listen to Black Women, Tori oh, yeah, Hart, it. Jesse Wu, Danielle Brooks. It was real cool. We had some great combos. And they already started giving me champagne <laughs> many hours ago. So, yeah. Uh, Are you so drinking out? No, no, no. Just water again today. Okay, I have enough for both of us. And please welcome <laughs> Armand Wiggins. What's up, Armand? What's going on, guys? I'm here and I'm chilling. And my voice is coming back, so I'm excited. Okay? Ooh. All that hookah smoking? I don't know what it was. I think it's those vapes. But now, I, like I said, I've been taking a break. My voice has come back and I drank some tea. So now I'm back. Like, I can talk. <laughs> oh, man. The, the trick is that you have to moisturize your throat and your vocal. Mm, you and how do you coat. do that? Uh, you probably have a better idea than me because I. Uh -huh. <laughs> Water, of course. What are you thinking? Water. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So, okay. So you're okay. Good. So we're gonna try to behave a little bit tonight, right? Or are we? Yeah. Not? We're gonna. Be, we behave every night. I feel like. No. Unleash. Let it out, Claudia. You've been. You've been so uptight lately. Let it out. Let it out. Oh, I, 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 I've not really been that uptight. I'm in a scandal every other week. You know what I'm saying? All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Armand. What were we going to say? I was going to say, yeah, you've been sitting out your letters and your paperwork and your cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. letters, yeah. letters, letters on deck. Yes. Feels it must great. be the birthday coming in. You're not playing any games. I told you, well, my hair is good. Looks good. Then I'm with, <laughs> I'm with the ish. You know what I'm saying? All right. Let's get into these topics. Uh, let's get into this Hollywood breakup alert. That's not a good picture. 21-year-old <laughs> Aoki Lee Simmons has reportedly ended her relationship with 65-year-old Vittorio Asaf. Grand opening, grand closing. That was quick. And do y'all think it was the backlash that got to her? Mom, what do you think? Absolutely. But on one hand, I'm just kind of like, was this stage for, you know, whatever publicity that it garnered? And, and this, you know how they have these, like, conspiracies in Hollywood, like how people will, like, stage relationships just for the photograph and then, you know, supposed to, like, help the person's profile or business? So, you know, I don't know. I feel like it could be one of those weird kind of things. Like, all right, we got the moment. We don't have to do this anymore. Like, let's move on. Like, now we know who he is and maybe she's got some attention. Now people probably want to work with her now more or maybe her dad's going to give her the money. I don't know. It just feels a little bit uh contrived if you ask me no right al i'm gonna say this that 110 percent didn't have anything to do with her and hear me out on this i think i watched all of her reels and her videos that she made on TikTok and everywhere talking about she's going to see her boyfriend her boyfriend got her that her boyfriend got her this she was seen in the car riding with him I want to say, because this man is so old and so wealthy, I don't think he's on social media. So he didn't really see or feel all the frenzy until all his wealthy friends started hitting him up, talking about how awkward he was being slandered in the media. And as a businessman worth millions, if not billions, that he was taking a hit personally with his brand. That's how I felt. And maybe he was like, hey, you know what? You're getting backlash. I'm getting a lot of backlash. Why don't we put some distance in between the two of us right now publicly so i think they probably came to a mutual decision that right now given how they both are receiving backlash that it may not be in the best interest to be so publicly affectionate and and outwardly dating each other i think that makes sense and you know hey people may think they want to get into this fame life but there's a lot that comes with it. and like i said a lot of times a lot of rich men that are not famous want that attention he <laughs> clearly did not and i could see that being a problem especially how awful the picture was it wasn't a flattering picture actually for either one it was for actually a horrible one. picture and i think seeing that probably his daughter was like dad probably his daughter right. grandma, <laughs> grandpa <laughs> she's my age like <laughs> grandpa what are you doing uh ansel d'angelo said kimura made her shut that down because she knew it would be a bad reflection on the family sl willie said uh that was quick maybe her people got in her but maybe he looked bad and and folks got with his old ass and um <laughs> Mrs. Mia Mia said she wanted to prove to her daddy she can pull a sugar daddy after he said she couldn't. And hmm. uh, 
Ray says she dumped him like a hot pocket. We don't know who dumped who, so who knows here, but right. that would hurt yourself seem to be dumped by a man that looked like that. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, in Diddy news, Instagram model Jade Ramy is clearing her name after she uh, was listed as an alleged sex worker in Lil Rod's lawsuit against Diddy. Girl, I feel your pain. They just be talking, don't they? Mm. Jade told Entertainment Tonight in a statement, yes, I dated someone. How unfortunate we entered a time where caring for someone or falling in love is worthy of scrutiny in the court of public opinion. What may be amusing for you is real life for others. And my feelings have never been for entertainment, nor are they up for discussion. What are your thoughts on her statement, Al? Oh, I think they're absolutely. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Jade Ramey, you didn't convince anybody of anything. You never denied the allegation that you were a sex worker. And all you're here saying is that you were in love with him. Two things can be true at the same time, sweetheart. You can be a sex worker and still be in love with all the fame, access, and money and excitement that Diddy brought to your life. I think the best thing for her to do is stay off of social media until this case is settled. All right, Armand, what do you think? I mean, I kind of agree with that, too, because it also feels like, come on, guys, during that time, I feel like he was with her, Young Miami, Daphne. Like, Diddy was seen around with all these different women and popping babies in and out of different ones. So it's kind of like, well, were you really his girlfriend? You know, it seemed like it was more of like a on-call kind of situation. You know, then you had Young Miami talking about, you know, she he would let her, you know, take a pee on her, you know? So it, it seemed a little pay for hire and convenience for me. So like Al says, she didn't clear anything up. And can you be wrong for the people assuming that you were a sex worker, uh, given the the type of relationship that she, Diddy has had with all these women at the same time? Like, it's not that far off. I don't want to call her a sex worker, but I'm going to say this. Um, I think that uh, a lot of times when you're in these situations, it may not be presented as, you are my sex worker. It may be... <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seriously, and I, I could. I, I'm always trying to like. Okay, I could see how. I could see how you're one of the girls in the stable, right? And you don't even yes. call yourself a sex worker. You think you're one of his girls. Like you know, there's a lot of famous like boxers and other celebrities that have a harem of women. I don't think they would call themselves sex workers. I think in their world, in their mind, and how they're able to pr deal with it and and be okay with it is no. Like he just takes care of me, and I, you know, we do what we do. I, I think that's where the problem is. But, you know, when someone says it so harshly and says sex worker and you're like, no, but we've had conversations and he's told me about his mom or his, his pains. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I think that's where um, we just don't know because we're not in the room with these people. So just if she if she was like Cassie, let's just put a hypothetical there. If she like Rodney Jones is a legend, if she was like Cassie, um, what he's a legend with Daphne and and, and Carisha, I mean, uh, young Miami. What do you consider yourself when you're hiring male prostitutes or escorts? You're going on a site, picking out the ones that the, you know, the two of you agree on. They come in, they have sex with you, and then you go to the next one. When you're so doing I that multiple times, what, what in their head, I'm just thinking, what emotionally would they call themselves? Well, Jade probably thinks she's one of his girls that they are hiring other sex workers that they're calling those agencies but i think she probably thinks that she's more than that i, I see it all the but, time, it, but like, it would be weird though because then he, he'd be out with young miami they're on vacation with this one and then yeah popped up with a baby with that one so they all know that they're not his girlfriend so yeah, they're well, sex it, work they're his whole they that it couldn't be me but i'm just saying <laughs> i see a lot of girls out here that are part of harems that don't they think they're just like it just is what it is things are different now Times are different. He, you know, you know, he's not just one of us. We're we're all like taking care. I don't know. It ain't my life. You know, like I said, I, I was a sex worker. They tried to say I was, but I'm not a sex worker, so I don't know. So hey, hey, Jade, hit us up. I would love to talk to some of these girls that are mm -hmm. in part of, uh, you know, that were intertwined with him. She's saying she had feelings for him, so maybe she doesn't see it that way. All mm -hmm. right. Speaking. Of, oh, Giselle Robinson said everyone with a partner is a sex worker, and well, Carol Jones says, but. Was she servicing Diddy's friends? And Danny says she thinks she's special. I will tell you this as a woman, we all want to believe that, even if it seems so ridiculous that, mm. like, it's so, like, I've had conversations with girls talk, talking about the ledge, like, girl, you're not special. Like, seriously, outside looking in, you look horrible. And they're really a delusion, like, because we have this thing called estrogen that makes us mm. sometimes not want to see, you know, what it really is. I'm just saying. All right, moving on. Speaking of Diddy, oh my God. He recently received received some fan love while in Miami. 
Take a look. Much love. We love you. All right. Why do you think certain people continue to show love to the men in the industry with a history of sexual misconduct? Aman. Well, I think a few things, uh, because number one, I think a lot of the hate we receive, you know, is online and it just stays online. The internet is not a real place. And then once people see you in person, it, do it doesn't really translate there. So people see, that's Diddy. They immediately go into fan, like, oh my God, hey. You know what I mean? And also, I do believe that some men will, and some people, will, even women, will see that, hey, well, he hasn't been charged of any of this, so he's innocent until proven guilty. The man is still walking free. These are just allegations at this point. That's really all it is. So can you really crucify him? Right. Okay. Al, what do you think? Um, I think that, it, you, first of all, in the video, it was only men saying, hey, what's up? We love you, okay? And it's just the how we in um, the American culture idolize wealthy, especially black men sexually, um, and also just being a celebrity and an R&B hip hop mogul, it's that whole sex drugs rock and roll is something that a lot of people want to experience but aren't able to experience and they end up idolizing individuals like that marry that to music he makes good music like with r kelly he makes great music he was he he, he knows how to entertain people and they can't forget that of 30 years of that over the last two weeks of bad press. They still have ingrained in their mind this perception about a guy that they just only until recently publicly has he been drugged for all his wrongdoings or alleged wrongdoings. You know, we have a problem. Well, it's not a problem if you're a celebrity uh, in, in our country, in our world. Like celebrity is more powerful than the truth. It's more powerful than the evidence you may see with your own eyes. Uh, it, it, like you mentioned, R. Kelly, we saw a 14 year old girl dancing for him and getting urinated on. And there was still a segment of the population that refused to crucify this black man or throw this black mm -hmm. man under the bus. Even though said black man is throwing a young teenage girl under the bus, if you really think about it. I think we're addicted and we're um, obsessed with celebrity. It's like a drug. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, we, we talk all this trash. I mean, O.J. Simpson still has people that want his autograph. And yes, he was found. He was acquitted. But one of those wink, wink acquitted, right? We all. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I just feel like uh, there's, there's always going to be people that no matter what the person, the offense is, celebrity trumps a lot of that. I mean, we have a comment from uh, Bettina Lester that said same reason why they continue to support Trump. He's done a lot of he has a lot of followers and he's done a lot for the black community. Uh, wait, I'm not going to say I will not. And, um, Aqua You're Boogie not going to read that. <laughs> no, sorry. I read that in real time. Aqua Boogie said Mike Tyson is a convicted sex offender, but society still loves his dirty drawers. Yuck. OK, that's yeah. true. And uh, and he admitted it at the trial. Amber Brooklyn said there were so many people commenting and supporting uh, Diddy on his last IG post. He dropped the video. Right. It looked really like that lifestyle. It reminded us of how dope his lifestyle is and how we all wanted to kind of live like that. And people were just forgetting about all this other stuff. So we're very fickle, right? Uh, you, I just, I don't know because even on one of these shows, I mean, we had the other day when we were talking about the Kenneth Petty situation. You know, Al, we were talking. I was like, you know, if if you know if he's been kind of clean and on the right path, we we could still rock with him. So perhaps it goes the same way. Diddy, he hasn't been, uh, you know, he's he hasn't been convicted of anything. So why are we gonna? Why are we going to crucify him? You know what I'm saying? If, if we're willing to forgive a man who's been convicted, went to jail as being a rapist, for if we're willing to forgive him for good behavior, then we can we can give Diddy some grace because he hasn't been convicted. I just hate how we pick and choose. It's not a very consistent um, mm -hmm. ring stick. You know what I mean? I, mm -hmm. I, there's people in the, in the community that will never forgive Chrisette Michelle for performing at Donald Trump's inauguration. Mm -hmm. She People are dumb with her. And what does she do? She got a bag to perform at a white supremacist inauguration, allegedly. But, you know, uh, okay. Hey, we'll see where this goes. Okay, coming up, Terrence Howard opens up about his lawsuit against CAA. And later, we are breaking down Al's outrage. Keep it here. We'll be right back. Scene one of three, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that 
y'all literally kill me, man. They hug you? Yeah. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I'll probably do. I love you, man. I love you, too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, we have an update on Jonathan Majors. The actor avoided jail time after being convicted of harassment and reckless assault in the third degree. Instead, he was sentenced to 52-week uh, in-person domestic violence intervention program. Do you think this is a reasonable outcome, Al? Um, I don't know. I, I've been sitting here thinking about it, Claudia. To be honest, they put him in an in-person domestic violence program where he has to be in a therapy session once a week for one year. All right. So for me, where is that therapy session at? And also, can he do it remotely just in case he gets a new job? Because if that's not the case where he has to be in person, like they're saying, is he allowed to get a job outside of California? I mean, obviously not, because if you if you violate your probation, you know, you go to jail for me personally. And I know this may not sound like the smartest thing, but for me personally, I think I would have taken jail time because I think his jail time was something like 10 to 30 days. It was something minimal. I think personally to get this behind me and get back focused on my career and not have to worry about violating a probation for uh, 365 days. I personally would have taken the 10 to 12 days in jail, gotten it over with, focused back on my career, rehabbed my career after that, and, and would not have to worry about violating any type of probation. All right. Armand, what do you think? I probably would have done the same thing from a person, you know, have been through the system myself. You know, I didn't complete the full probationary period, so I ended up having to go and do three weeks myself. So I understand that that probationary that that that's mm. harder some time that's harder than you know just going doing the time sometimes and you know for me it's easier to make a mistake when you have this one year probationary period that you have to abide by so i think i would have taken the time too um especially since you know his whole career pretty much got ruined he lost all those jobs just to have to end up going to therapy just i should you should just went to jail for the 30 days and moved on you know, that makes sense to me, uh, Armand, because I was also talking about this on my YouTube channel where we said in that year, he can't bump into somebody. He can't have a car, a car run in with anybody because they could call the police and, you know, they could escalate it to something out of his control and make it something that it's not. And that will fall under the guise of violating his probation. Right. And so I don't I, I don't know. I like I, I agree with you. I think do the time real quick and turn the page. I'm sure he doesn't want the image, right, that we would right. all have of him coming out of jail. And that's probably why yeah. he didn't. But I will say, being on perfect behavior, when you have a history of, you know, kind of a little outburst here and there, um, it's going to be difficult, y'all. Sometimes they set up these parole conditions in a way where Forget they're right. going to violate mm -hmm. it and they're going to get you on the back end. Okay, uh, Amber Brooklyn said, I wonder if his career will survive this. 
And New Attitude said, well, off to the white women Jonathan goes. And uh, Re Rejuve, you said he did not commit a violent crime. The penalty fit the crime. Please, Al. And JW said, who cares? We are done with this topic. I feel like they are dragging this out to embarrass this black man. All right. I don't know. Terrence Howard sat down to explain why he uh, hit talent agency CAA with a hefty lawsuit. Take a look. Every year I'm asking my agents, what's going on? What's going on? I didn't know that the packaging deal, my agents were incentivized to keep my pay low. All right, how do you feel about this? And are you feeling Terrence's new look, Armand? What do you think? Wait, what is the hair Fawcett? giving? What's the fair faucet hair giving? Is that what it what is, do do we know? Is that like a movie or something? Is this a skit? What is this? I pray that it's a movie. Uh well, they're saying that he he kind of wore this 70s flip to kind of bring attention to the conversation. Mm. So I allegedly it's supposed to be a wig. And I'll say this, I I, I think that Terrence Hart, Hart mm, Terrence Howard is very smart. What if you really looked at this deal, they did not take their 10%, Claudia, that an agent takes. They said, hey, we're your agent, but you, we're not gonna take your 10%. What we're gonna do is we're gonna package this because they also represented the executive producer, Lee Daniels, and also another executive producer, I can't remember his name, Jay Strong, or some something in there like that. And what they did was they had a profit participation deal where they got a percentage on packaging the show and all of its talents and selling the show. So the reason why they didn't give him money that he was worth, he only got up to $350,000 an episode, not like his colleagues on different shows with less, with the same time slot with less viewers, is because if they paid him what he was worth, then their profit would have shrunk. So he wants his $150 million that he deserves based on his rate right and not based on the agents looking out for their profit margins and not his i think it makes perfect sense i just think he diluted it you know with this hair i think uh, he's trying to pay them taxes <laughs> so he thought hey <laughs> i need some coins because don't he owe about a hundred million dollars or something crazy allegedly in taxes you guys will find out the facts but he owes a lot of money in taxes and i think he's trying to figure out ways how to get that money paid in my opinion that's what it sounds like to me I don't understand how this outfit is bringing a better. I, it, it does make it go viral because we're sitting here yes. talking. About it. Um, but we would still be talking about this even if he didn't have that wig on. But I, I, don't, I don't get the meaning. Is it going over our head? What is the meaning? Is he going back to the seventy? What is it like a? Yeah, I, I think I missed it too. And that's the part where we're talking about the wig more than we're talking about how much sense he makes and the money that he's owed and what was done wrong. Now, let's be clear. He was done so wrong and he was so right that after the writer strike of 2020, they have banned this type of packaging deal for agencies to do moving forward. So he's got his finger on the pulse. He's definitely making a lot of sense, but he's looking crazy all in the process while doing it. He's no dummy. I just question his choice of in, in lace fronts of wigs. I, <laughs> I, I, I hope you win the good fight against the corporations. All right, singer Lily Allen did not hold back when addressing Beyonce's new country album, specifically her version of Dolly Parton's song Jolene. He said, it's very weird that you cover the most successful song in that genre. You do you, Beyonce. And she literally is doing her, or is she doing Dolly? Social media, of course, had to chime in, and someone wrote, and Miley did it, Oh, and Miley did it, was the same question asked then. Another person wrote, Beyonce killed her version of Jolene, period. Not only did it have the exact vi same vibe, but the words made you feel more empowered. Do you think Lily Allen is out of line here, Al? Oh, absolutely. Okay, guys, be mad at me if you want to. But first of all, she's not even American. She is a Brit. She's from London. And she has no idea what the genre of country music, where it comes from in this country. So what gives her the right to speak on with such authority, her disdain for Beyonce and how Beyonce is going back to the roots of country music, which started with the African slave trades and the chanting. I just find that someone so disconnected 
to be giving her a voice just really pisses me off. Oh. Beyonce is bringing people together, not dividing them. And it's this type of spewing that divides people and not bring them together. If Dolly Parton didn't have a problem and she's the queen of country music, then why do you, Miss Lily Island, have a problem? And what are you even talking about? Why are you speaking on American pop culture or American genres when you're not even an American? And I know that's sad because if she was a thought authority in music, then I could probably pay attention. But don't come at me not knowing the roots. And the roots go back to African history, which gives this black woman, Beyonce, very talented black woman, the ability to participate in that genre without all your drama. You know, some of the caucus has been really angry ever since Beyonce dom took over and dominated this country music scene. They have right. an issue every single week about Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce. They cannot keep Beyonce's name out of their mouths, just like Beyonce cannot keep her songs out of the top 10. They are staying. They're just like Beyonce is staying in y'all's mouths. Absolutely mouth. right. Why? Why are y'all so mad? Why are y'all so they, This is the same way they behaved when Black people came in. Arthur Ashe got into tennis. This is the same mm. way they behaved when Serena and Venus Williams got into tennis. Same way they behaved when Tiger Woods, a quarter of his Black self, got into golf. Like, they get so upset that when Black people enter these different spaces, but this one in particular, we're going to always stand on this one because... Uh, like we've said on the show many times, look up the beginning, the origins of the cowboy and cow and that, that culture and actually country music and where did it start? Armand, what do you think about this? I agree with both you guys wholeheartedly. And I just think that honestly, it's not even really about the song or Dolly Parton. It's just about a black woman stepping into this space and white people are feeling some type of way. That's all it is. They want mm -hmm. us to shut up and eat our food and stay in our little section that they've given us. And we're breaking out of that. We're waking up. We're taking our roots back. We're taking our history back. And it's making white people feel uncomfortable. And they think that their voice matters so much that we should give a damn about her opinion. Like, why are we even talking about her? Who is she? Beyonce doesn't care. We don't care. Like, her opinion does not matter. She can stay over there in, in, in Europe with that, because um, we don't care. <laughs> I honestly don't know who this person is. I, I, I don't know Dolly, who she is either. I don't either. A Dolly Parton uh, allegedly requested that Beyonce cover the song. You know, I I guess when you've been pushing this, this narrative for a long time, white supremacy, and this isn't all white people, and please, I hope this is, this is not felt by all white people. I'm talking to people that are racist. I'm talking to people that have a problem with this. You specifically, um, you know, I understand that the frustration with seeing a group of people that have been held back so much and still thriving, and then when they come in a space that you deem yours and special that like we can't conquer, comes in and does it so effortlessly. Maybe if you weren't so busy trying to hold people back and try to keep people out of things, when they do get the chance to do it, they won't be so goddamn good. You know, it's a lot Ooh. of like, it's not a yeah. lot of pent up like, okay, bet. And that's what, what about but what about when they jump into all of our spaces, our our looks, our fashion, our style, our wording, and our our, our music, and they're rewarded for it. You know, when they start we're welcoming, black people are welcoming. Like, look at how we embrace John B. and and Justin Timberlake, and and, and the list goes on. We call them blue eyed soul. M and we, we give them awards. Yeah. We don't hate. We're like, oh, he's cool. He's down. He you know he gets it. Like, we're more welcoming. I'm just saying, most of us. Coming up next, we are breaking down Al's outrage, and later we're digging into some political news. We'll be right back. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here. Being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> this one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. 
They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, let's get back to some more topics. Soulmates, our very own brand strategist, Al Reynolds, is passionate about covering stories that are placed in the archives of media. And that's why tonight, Mr. Reynolds will be giving us his unfiltered opinion in a segment we like to call, Where's the Outrage? <laughs> Today's outrage is coming straight out of Raleigh, North Carolina. The first Black-owned children's bookstore in North Carolina is being forced to shut down less than a year after opening due to death threats and hate mail. Victoria Scott Miller and her husband, Dwayne Miller, opened the bookstore in June 2023. While addressing the death threats, Victoria stated, some we brushed off, while others included disturbing phone calls detailing what our son Langston wore when he was at the shop alone. Wow. Al, take it away. Yes, you heard it right. Death threats because she owns a bookstore that educates young black men and other young people of color to empower them. Yeah, where is the outrage? It's like America don't want the younger generation to be educated about anything other than their struggles as black Americans, but all but not all of their triumphs. Their significant child contributions that black people have made in America in sports in education, in law, in science, in television, and in business. Instead, America insists through threats, and now even legislation in multiple states to rule it illegal to learn the truth about your power as a young black man, and we see it right here. So I say, where is the outrage? And where is the outrage in this case? I'm gonna say it's twofold. Uh, one, against the prejudice in the white supremacists, but also where's the outrage in our community? When are we gonna stand collectively together and say no more on this bull crap? No more outlawing books about us in public schools. No more outlawing bookstores and threats to be allowed in communities that look the color of you and I. No more, and let's start today. So for me, the outrage is not only with the white supremacists and those legislators who are trying to take away the power of us learning more about our greatness. The outrage is also for our black blogs. Why aren't I seeing more coverage mm. on this? The outrage is also for not uh, our notables like the NAACP standing up for our rights that are clearly being violated at this moment. The outrage comes in, on the national platforms like the, the talk shows of, uh, of the morning. Why aren't they highlighting this story and bringing uh, solemn to this this woman and support. Where is the outrage from all of us in this? Because we all hold a stake. If you are too afraid to stand up for your young black kids in America today, then we are really at a deficit. Let's do better. Let's let's figure out a way. Let's write to our congressmen. Let's go to the board meetings in Raleigh. Let's take to social media. Let's demand that this woman has the right to educate our young black men so that they can grow up to be powerful individuals in sports and education and law, science, television and business. Let's do better collectively so that this type of stuff won't ever be allowed again. All right. Um, hey, you know, I'll we have to piggyback what you're saying. We have over almost $2 trillion worth of buying power, spending power in this nation, Black people. Imagine if we were all on code collectively. Right. That we would, that we were collectively on the same page instead of just being me, 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 I, 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 and we were on a we thing like our aunts, like our our our, our parents were, the 60s and the 50s and the 40s. Uh, we would have a lot of power. To, this stuff wouldn't be happening. That's giving me uh, slavery. It's giving me Jim Crow. Right. That a bookstore can't peacefully exist in 2020, 2024. And you know what else is also said? I think that, like, he made a good point as, as far as, like, the media, the black media and publications. But I think, unfortunately, us as black people and consumers, 
we're not interested in this. We're not excited about this. So we probably mm. won't take the time to read it. It doesn't turn over as much clicks or views right. or engagement. So therefore it won't get posted, you know? And this is, that's so dangerous for our community because, you know, we should know that these things are kind of happening. So I'm glad that we have this segment and, you know, you're able to show highlight these moments because I yeah. wouldn't have not known either. I do want to say this. I do want to thank Fox Soul. I want to thank Joyce. I want to thank our producers. I want to thank Claudia and you, Armand, for allowing me the opportunity to highlight this type of stuff because our platform, I don't care what anybody says about it, we speak into spaces where it's unspoken. And it's from our perspective, from our power. And I want to thank everybody at Fox Soul for allowing me to do mm -hmm. this. And there was a couple of blogs that did put out there because that's what we saw it, but we need all of them to be talking yeah. about this. Y'all talk about Blueface and Krishan. And, and run those numbers up on those kind of stories. And Kanye and Diddy, run up these kind of stories as well. We need some kind of balance. All right, good work, Al. Let's get back to some more topics. Actress Zoe Deshano uh, caused a stir after tackling the topic of nepotism. She said, it's funny because people will be like, nepotism, no one's getting jobs because their daddy's a director of photography. Definitely not. Someone on social media wrote, this is exactly what a nepo baby would say. Someone else wrote, I'm so tired of this conversation. They were born privileged and that's okay. Accept it and let's move on with our lives. Do you agree with Zoe or do you think nepotism plays a part in some people's careers? Armand, what do you think? Definitely nepotism plays a part in people's career and she's a nepotism baby, okay? she Her father's what, a six time Academy Award uh, nominated uh, film, uh, uh, what is it? Director of photography. Uh -huh. Yeah, director of photography. So absolutely he has connections in Hollywood. Of course, his offspring and his family will have, you know, the cheat code, the direct lines or whatever that they need. So I'm not going to just take away like her talent and ability to work and be an actress. But at the same time, you definitely get a, a closer opportunity, a better opportunity to, you know, making it. So I definitely think it exists in Hollywood. All right. Al, what do you think? I think that nepotism exists. I think that nepotism is okay as long as they're good and they rise to the occasion. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a different perspective in here. I think we, you know, the black community, we need to start exercising nepotism too. That's what I think. I think we have, uh, over the last decade and a half, we've had a lot of black people in significant spaces doing significant work in entertainment and sports. I love how LeBron is is recruiting his son to the NBA. I love how um, Lala Anthony and her husband is grooming their son for the NBA. I love watching that happen. That's a form of nepotism, making sure they have the best trainers and making sure they have the best coaches and making sure they're in the best teams to be seen to be groomed and to be prepared. I think it's okay. We as black people need to stop this narrative, especially when we have the opportunity to empower, to empower nepotism, to say, oh, you gotta earn it like everybody else did. Because our cohorts are not requiring that. And our cohorts are getting paid and passing on their generational wealth much better than us. So I think nepotism is okay. I just want more powerful black people to exercise it. It seems like we uh, do the opposite though. We'll stop yep. talking about that. But as far as like helping, it really, I, I really don't see a lot of it happen sometimes, but not as much as it should. And yeah, we should. You know, I just think that we've been so, maybe our DNA just has so much like struggle in it that it's still in a lot of our DNA to be like, no, I had to work the hard, hard way to get it. You, I'm not going to make it easy for you. So we just kind of do that. And I, I, I wish we would actually yeah, be a little bit more helpful. Again, but, we could be so powerful if we got on one page, but we refuse. We have we have too much ego in our community. We but do. I think we're seeing it a little bit, like at least with the like with Kanye and Northwest and you know Beyonce and Blue Ivy. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's happening. You know what I mean? It just didn't happen, maybe for us. But I mean, it's happening now. Like people are waking up, and like like to you guys' point, I don't see anything wrong with it because I wish I was a nepple baby. You wouldn't make me feel bad about it at all. I but I would still do my thing. It's not a bad thing. And I don't know why people try to make it seem like it's a bad thing. I can't help that, you know, my family or I'm rich or that I have opportunities. I believe that we all try to work to get to that position to where it's easier for the next generation coming behind us and our family. So I, I would love to have a generation of nepotism babies that I produce in my life, you know? So I don't think that we should bash people or try to make them feel bad about it. But also, girl, let's just keep it real. It is what it is. Don't try to relate where you can't. 
Right. I don't mind if the person talented, but they just uh, they suck and they're taking a the job away from someone that's actually Yeah, good. now that that's um, when it gets weird. Uh, Paige said Denzel put his son on. We need more of that. And JW said, absolutely, and they should own it. Stop acting like you had it hard. Uh, you may be talented, but you definitely had it easier. Yeah, right. it's okay. To, yeah, all right. A man in Kentucky has admitted to faking his death to avoid over $100,000 in child support. 39-year-old Jesse Kemp, Kemp <laughs> uh, manipulated the death, the personal, I'm sorry, death registry by using personal information from a doctor in another state, <laughs> making a case of death for himself. He pleaded guilty to one count of aggravated identity theft and computer fraud. What's the wildest thing you've done to get out of paying some money that you owed? Al, what you think? Uh, the wildest thing I've done? I don't know. I'm too I'm too afraid. First of all, I'm afraid of prison. So I don't want to do anything that could possibly get me a jail time. Um, I just have so many questions with this story. Like, how many kids did he have that he owes $250,000 in child support? And, and how much money does he make? That means he must be making, he doesn't look like it, but he must be making a hefty amount of money to owe $250,000. I know this is not popular opinion. I don't know that I would have faked the death, but I, I, I would have tried other methods. I mean, how would he ever pay off two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and he still has to pay for the day that he starts that moving forward? I don't know. There's a win-win here at all. No, Amber Brooklyn said this is so ratchet, sir. Take care of your kids. Shaking my head. Armand, what are your thoughts? You know, there's that look that we talk about. It's a certain <laughs> look that they have, and I'm gonna be honest with you. This may be an unpopular opinion, but hell, you know, judging from the look, and I know what that look means, that's his, that was his only option, but to fake that death. I mean, because what else was he going to do? Where was he going to get the money? You know what I mean? So if I was him, I feel you. Shit got sticky. I mean, he, had to, <laughs> he had to do what he had to do. But at the same time, if you can get that clever and that creative, Bro, you should have been that smart either to use condoms and take or or take care of your kids or go get a job so you can afford to pay the debt off. You know what I mean? Because he went to some extenuous lengths to not have to pay that debt. So smart somewhere. He just didn't use it in the right way. You know, on one hand, it's like, damn, that's got to suck to have that like that monkey on your back of all that money that you have to pay. And a lot of times you're not with the woman anymore. So you may call her all kind of names. You might ah, I want to pay that B. But also, the money you're not paying, someone else had to make up for that. And those kids probably had to go without. So, you know, I, a bit dramatic to fake your death. Now you have more fines on top of that. Now you're going to have a record making it even more difficult. And now you're kind of stuck. You're almost in that kind of probation situation where they're like, waiting for you to mess up again. Like, you are, you are, you belong to the game now. And you do have that look in your eye. That he, that's that look of when they might do something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, like, that, you know, that's that look where they go and, you know, and say, you know, I don't want to pay. I'm going to go kill the kids and the woman then kill myself. And then, you know, it's somewhere it's a Netflix special somewhere. You know yeah. what I mean? That's that look. He'll kill the whole family before he pay. Yeah, he's not paying them. <laughs> then kill himself. Allegedly, 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 in my opinion. Shelby W said child support racks up fast over the years. You should see my baby daddy statements and the outstanding balance. Ooh. Air Bear said his check is going to be completely gone every month for six years. I mean, so was the mom's every month, too. So I, I'm sorry. You both made the kid. You both have to pay. Keep it locked because coming up next, we're digging into some political news. And later, we're spilling the tea on spicing up your relationships. We'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has bought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as a oh. host myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. 
You're gonna get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back to the show. All right, Uncle Sam can't seem to stay out of the news lately from dirty politicians to people speaking out against their governments all around the world. We'll get into the tea with a new segment we like to call Political Tea with Claudia. All right. Donald Trump recently compared himself to Nelson Mandela in an attempt to defend himself against his upcoming hush money criminal fraud trial in New York. Trump posted, if this partisan hack wants to put me in the clink for speaking openly and obvious truth, I will gladly become a modern day Nelson Mandela. It will be my great honor. Child. Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in prison because he was fighting for everyone to have democracy and to be able to vote. And he's a peaceful man. You are on trial for hush money you paid a porn star you had raw dog sex with while your wife was pregnant. Y'all are not the same. And what we're not about to do, Trump, will let you play in our faces. I don't know why you're so obsessed with black men. Like, you you have this love-hate thing with black people. Because I remember when you told me specifically, don't waste my time dating black men, and I asked you why. You said, because they don't have any money. So you deem them less than worthy if they don't have money seemingly you're not going to have money much longer either but to compare yourself to one yourself to one of the greats in history that was known for peace that was known for inclusion and wanting everyone to vote while you're sitting out here uh, with all these election interference cases is beyond me like the fact that you don't see the irony in this is mind blowing and you want to be president again and you say Joe Biden is the senile one you compared yourself to Nelson Mandela while also singing the praises of Adolf Hitler and saying how much you like this guy. You've talked about this, we've heard you. So I would like you to keep legendary black men out of your mouth, shut the hell up when it comes to that. Do not put your name and Nelson Mandela's name in the same sentence unless you're talking about opposite day. It's a slap in the face to this man and his family who selflessly sacrifice mm. a third of over a third of his life in a prison when he could have gotten out if he would just and he didn't he stood on principle something you never do donald trump you used to be cool before you got with the tea party and then you wanted to pander to racists and pretend to be one so you can like get that 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 forgotten people vote but please um stop disrespecting uh, black people on one hand, you you trash them. On the other hand, you want to be like them and comparing yourself and thinking you're going to get the black vote because you think you have an indictment against you makes you more sexy to black people because it does not. Uh, yeah, once again, I will say in closing, keep Nelson Mandela's name out of your mouth. Fellas, what do you think about this, how ridiculous this is, Donald Trump saying, com to, to make that comparison? Armand, what do you think? Really quick, I just think that, you know, like you said, the Nelson Mandela piece, that was a very selfless act. Donald Trump is working out of ego and self-righteousness. So it's just not the same, Donald Trump. He's a he's a master of uh, manipulator and gaslighter. He's entertaining, but at the same time, it's all about himself. He doesn't care about the people. This is for his ego, so... Donald Trump, I'm not with you on this, my guy. Al? Claudia, I, I can't add anything more to that. You did an excellent job of highlighting, like, why he should never, ever, not on our good internet and not on our platform, are we going to ever support anybody talking against a Nobel Peace Prize winner, a fighter against, you know, apartheid. 
uh, you know, someone who spent 40 years, 260 awards in their lifetime and still spent 27 years in prison. No, sir. No, sir. Not, not, not this month, not the month of April. No, in fact, not any month. No. And his obsession lately with the black folk, I'm telling you, this man told me to my face not to deal with black men. So I get really frustrated when I see black men rallying around this man. I know we give you a hard time, Armand, about the sneakers, but like for me, <laughs> he personally told me this to my face and kind of, to me, he threw away the entire black male race. And although I'm not a black man, I have love for black men. And the fact that he said that so casually to throw him away, but now he's using black people. He's trying to manipulate black men and some, they uh -huh. say, what a percentage uh -huh. are starting to buy into it. But I, he, he would never be championing Nelson Mandela for any other reason or anything else. So he he's trying to pander and he's trying to manipulate people right now. And he's being very selfish in doing it. So, yeah, it's definitely a, it's a nasty spirit that he's doing right now. Nasty work, Donald. Hey, very nasty. Mom, come on over to the right side. Come on. Very over. nasty. On I mean, I can tell a gaslighter when I see it. You know what I mean? And he, you're uh, using this to, to your benefit right now, and it, it doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good either. Oh, there is hope in the world. <laughs> We're getting through. All right, coming up, we're spilling the tea on spicing up your relationship. Stay tuned. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back to the show. All right, check out this tweet. The tweet says, can we admit relationships get boring? Do you agree with the tweet? And have you done, what have you done in the past to spice up a relationship? Go ahead, Armand. <laughs> Getting boring? I just think it goes through its ebbs and flows. I guess that's boring. I don't know. I wouldn't call relationships boring. I just think sometimes they get stagnant. So I think sometimes you got to get to a point where, okay, the honeymoon phase is over. You know, where are we at now? And so there's just different things you can do. I would say take a vacation. Um, and um, yeah, sexually, there's things that you can do. Experiment on things that you guys have never done before. Maybe fantasy, play some dress up, you know, to be spontaneous. Okay. Something like that. I hear you drink some alcohol, mm -hmm. <laughs> partake of some festivities. Fly out, you know what I mean? <laughs> Have a threesome. Oh Lord! No. Um, I, yeah, I I kind of feel like if I'm really into the person for me, uh, because I, because I love very hard, I think I I don't I've never gotten bored with with someone that I'm really into. I mean, I like all of the challenges. I like all the ups. I like all the downs. They're not always comfortable, but I you know I, if I'm really into a person, I'm not bored. 
you know, bored to me say like they're not interested in each other anymore. And I think that that happens a lot in relationships. But to me, if I'm really into you, I, I, I don't really get bored. I even like the bored days, boring days. I like to just sitting at home and watching TV. I like the cooking at home instead of going out. So for me, if I'm really into you, I don't know that uh, over the years that I have dated and been married, I don't get bored if I'm into you. Um, I, I think I've gotten used to things, you know, where it's like, okay, the butterflies aren't there anymore. But I do think if you think you're gonna have butterflies for the rest of your life with anyone, you are sadly mistaken and you're in for a, a very a big disappointment. Because anything you really liked or loved in the beginning, and I hate to compare things with people, but like, say you get a new chain or a new car, you love it, you talk about it all the time, you like, and after a while, everything that you love so much, you like maybe like, okay, I don't know if it's bored, but you're like, all right, it doesn't have the same excitement, but it's mm -hmm. still valuable. And I think we have to like look at things as still being value. And I think there's value and stability. I'm the type of person, I, I can eat the same kinds of food and be do the same kind of things for the rest of my life. And I'll be happy with that. I like stability. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, things can get boring when you're not being fulfilled, I guess. If you're being fulfilled, I think, how can you really be that bored? But what do I know? I'm single right now. So, hey, there's that. All right. Before we go, oh, we have a comment. Sunny Levin said, spontaneity is the key to having a boring relate. Wait, is key to having a boring relationship? Is key to not having a boring not relationship? Not having a boring relationship. Yeah, they left the word out there. You got to spice it up and, and make it hot. Okay, let's go to our game. Before we go, let's play a game of Would You Rather. Okay. All right, cue the music and some ways play along with us in the chat. Fellas, would you rather have an 850 credit score but no cash? Or two million million dollars in cash with a poor credit score. I'll take the credit with no cash. I'm gonna take the two million dollars in cash and with a poor credit score. So I can pay off my debt, raise my credit score, have a whole lot of money left over, and still have both the credit score and a whole bunch of money. I'm taking the money. I'm using score master already. My credit will be <laughs> ah, you like that, Joyce? And then uh yeah, then we're gonna like, you know, not make those same mistakes that got me bad credit. All right, up next, up next, would you rather marry someone rich who treats you poorly or marry someone broke who treats you like a drunk queen? Uh, I'd rather marry someone rich who treats me poorly because uh, I can take the money and do what I need to do with it. I won't be there long, but I need to get ahead. I don't, you know, I can't be happy if you broke. Oh, wow. Um, I'm going to marry someone broke who treats me like a king. <laughs> Only because I make my own money. I've been doing that for a long time now. And I know how to, you know, get myself wealthy. I personally could never be in a relationship where someone treats me poorly. That shit feels horrible. Ooh. Yeah, I've done the rich person. I think they have a lot of options. The gut punches, constantly disappointment. I can't do it. So I'll take the poor guy that treats me well. Now, I'll, we, we all make money together. We all find a way. Would you rather be able to read your partner's mind or look through your partner's phone every day? Uh, hey, be able to read my partner's mind. That would save me a lot of, like, what do you want to eat today? Or a lot of, what are, what, are you okay? Are you feeling some type of way? Is every, did I do something wrong? Read, oh, my, being a mind reading is everything. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, I don't think I want to know what someone is actually thinking. Um, but I wouldn't, I don't have the interest of going through anybody's phone all day, but if I had to pick, I would say go through their phone every day, maybe. I'd rather be a mind reader because uh, going through the phone, do not go through my phone and I will not go through your phone. Because it's too easy to misunderstand something and be mad. True. If I read, read their mind, I would really know what they really would hear with someone can't hmm. That could suck too, because what if they like, she's getting fat. I know, right? Or they were like, I wish you would shut up. Right. <laughs> but would you rather have a partner who's adventurous in the bedroom, but emotionally distant? Or would you rather have a partner who's emotionally connected, but trash in the bedroom? Ooh. Okay, I'm a real emotional, touchy-feely kind of person, so I would go B. Have a partner who's emotionally connected, but trash in the bedroom, because we could work on that. But if you give me my cuddles and my kisses, we're good. Uh-uh, not me. I need some good sex. <laughs> <laughs> Trash in the bedroom, that goes straight to divorce court. I think you give me some adventure in the bedroom, and emotionally, I'll teach you. I promise you, I will teach you. Give me some good sex, and I'll teach you everything you need to know. 
Oh, this is hard because if uh, I'm not emotionally supported, the, the, the sex is going to be trash. I won't get into it. So. Mm -hmm. hey, so yeah, but are you, you going to stay around with trash sex? No, I'll be single. <laughs> Play. Anyways, we got to go. I want to thank my co host, Al Reynolds, and Armand Wiggins for joining me tonight. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Fox Soul Face Off. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Y'all behave tonight, okay? Try your best. It's only two. Have a good night, soulmates. You know what I mean? Bye. Bye.